Hi, I'm Shafan, and welcome back to our journey through Psalm 23. We began last time by taking a look at this idea that's presented to us at the beginning of Psalm 23, that God is our shepherd. And we looked at three specific ways that God shows his shepherding care for us in our day-to-day -day lives. Today, we'll continue that journey and we'll take a look at Psalm 23, verse three. We started that last time. It begins with, he restores my soul. And today we continue on with, he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. So what does that mean? He leads me in paths of righteousness. What is righteousness and, and how are we led there? You know, I have to say, I have this affinity for old preachings and, and teachings done by preachers from like my, maybe my grandparents' generation, like Billy Graham, just some of these legendary gospel preachers. And what I notice when I listen to their sermons is that there's always a central idea. It always comes back to that core gospel message that God is inherently holy, humans are inherently sinful, and that in order to be restored to right relationship with God, we need a savior, that our best efforts would never be good enough to do that. And I feel like this is something that even as a church today, we've kind of moved away from, right? I don't hear a lot of talk anymore about holiness and righteousness and repentance. Maybe we mention these things, but it doesn't feel so central to the messages we hear anymore. And actually, as a society, what we hear constantly is this message of you are enough, that you are perfect just the way you are, right? And there's shreds of truth in that because of who God has made us to be and how he sees us. But the reality is none of us would ever be enough on our own. None of us have what it takes to restore right relationship with God. In fact, it says in Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift. So this idea of being justified, of being made holy, of being made righteous, it's a gift of God. It's all of his doing. So I'm here today with what's not a very popular message, but it's a liberating truth. You are not enough and neither am I and we don't have to be. That's why we have a savior, right? Like our very best was never gonna be enough and God knew that. And he sent Jesus, his son, to die on the cross and make a way for us to have unbroken relationship with God. But it gets even better than that because it says in 2 Corinthians 5.21 that God knew him, Jesus, who knew no sin, he made him to become sin so that we could become the righteousness of God in Christ. And that's an amazing thought. Have you ever just stopped to think about this? No matter who you are, no matter where you're from, no matter what you've done, if you are a follower of Jesus, your identity is now the righteousness of God in Christ. That is who you are. That is how God sees you when he looks at you. He sees the righteousness of God in Christ. No matter how many times you've fallen or failed, no matter how many times you've been disappointed in yourself or worried that you've disappointed God, when he looks at you, he sees the righteousness of God in Christ. So we come back to this idea of being led in paths of righteousness. Okay, so if we're already the righteousness of God in Christ, what does it mean to be led in paths of righteousness? And this is where this whole idea of sanctification comes in. And I know it's like a big theological word, but really I like to think of sanctification as the process of God making us into who he already says we are. Okay, so when we live into this reality of God is our shepherd and we receive his shepherding care, that also contains the idea 
that we allow him to guide us in the way we should go to begin to make better choices, choices that align with who God is, choices that align with who God already says that we are. And so this is actually a very liberating thing to think about. I think often, especially in the past, when we've talked about holiness or righteousness or justification, there can be a very legalistic bent to it, right? And it kind of becomes about what we have to do and like a list of do's and don'ts and, and, and how to follow the protocols and how to behave yourself into a right life. But you can't do that, right? We know that. That's why we need a savior. But in this, we actually see that Jesus is guiding us in those paths. Now, a path is a step-by-step -step journey. If you walk down a path, you do it step-by-step. -step. And I love the picture of Jesus as our shepherd, that Holy Spirit with us to guide us as we take the steps that we need to take to follow the ways that God has for us. You know, throughout the Psalms, there is a repeated process that we see when the psalmist invites God's conviction into his life. In Psalm 139, verses 23 to 24, it says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. See if there is any offensive way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. So the psalmist invites God to search his heart and see, is there anything in me that does not bring you glory? Is there anything in me that's offensive to you? Show me that, God and then lead me in your way. He invites God to lead him in those paths of righteousness. I think, as I kind of mentioned before, so often I, I see that we have kind of moved away as, in Christianity today from this idea of coming back to repentance day by day, inviting that searching gaze of God. I know that I'm certainly guilty of this. I confess this is not something that I do every day. It's something that I'm growing in of inviting the Lord to search my heart and show me what is not righteous. What is there that is not leading me in his way? And then inviting instead for him to show me the right way to go. So I wanna ask you today, are you allowing the shepherd to guide you in paths of righteousness? Are you inviting the searching gaze of God to show you your own heart? And are you walking in repentance so that you can be led in his way? This is not a message of guilt or condemnation. Far from it, you guys. I, I know we are all in this together in wanting to grow towards more righteousness and living in the way that God desires. And again, this message is liberating because Jesus has done the work for us. We are already the righteousness of God in Christ. So there's no condemnation here, but this is a really valuable practice for us as we continue to grow and mature in the Lord and allow him to shepherd us. So be encouraged today as you invite the searching gaze of God and his guidance into your life.